You're listening to the Cheaters Never Pin Podcast, a proud part of the Section 328 family. Follow us on Twitter at Cheaters in VR Pin. Now, live from ringside, it's Mr. Workrate and JC. We survived, everyone. Somehow. 20 hours of WWE programming later. It's another episode of the Cheaters Never Pin podcast. I'm JC. Here next to me at the uh, commentary booth to the stars. My good buddy, Mr. Workrate, Tom. How how big is this booth? Because I may need to lay down and take a nap. Dude, I'm so tired. <laughs> With everything I have watched in the last seven days, I'm so tired. Like, we didn't have our normal get-together for Mania, but you could have easily put a pool together and tried to guess which match I was going to fall asleep in. Yeah. Dude, it, oh, what a long night. I mean, it started Wednesday wasn't that long of a day, or Thursday wasn't that long of a day. But then Friday, it really started getting long with, I think, was it Friday night was Joey Janela's spring break? I don't know. And that ended at 3-something in the morning, and then it just kind of, everything became a blur. Yeah. It was and, a long uh, weekend my... of wrestling. It was great, I mean... though. And and Saturday for me was long enough as it was because <laughs> right I had nine hours of tailgate. Yeah, you had to watch. You guys had to watch Takeover after the fact. Yeah, I I had to go into a social media bubble until uh, the following morning because I wanted to watch it and I didn't want spoilers, but. I knew spoilers were going to be all over the place. Oh, so, yeah. Especially, I tried going on social media after the hockey game, and I just started seeing, like, kind of <laughs> reactions, safe reactions, just like, oh, my God, this is great, this is amazing, and I'm just like, nope, I cannot be on. Yeah, that was the right call. So let's start. This is going to be a long show, folks. This is gonna be. Yeah. This, this is not going to fit in sixty minutes. So here's your warning. Break this up from your uh, drive to work and your drive home today, yeah. uh, because there's no way to fit the twenty hours of WWE plus all the other bullshit that happened in the last seven days uh, into one week or into one hour. I mean, settle in, get the mini freezer nearby, make what? sure it's loaded up yeah. with those uncrustables. There you go. Or Corona Light, as is my case today. It was almost the same product. Yes. They're similar. Similar texture. Um, I think an Encrustable has three times the calories of a Corona Light. Corona Light's only 99, I think. So. Yeah, I think I think a full-size Encrustable is like 300. Jesus Christ. Really? How is that even possible? Peanut butter has a lot of calories. That's true. But it's, it's a healthy fat, peanut yeah. butter, so... As long as, it's it's not, as long as it's not loaded with a lot of corn syrup and sugar, it's good for you. And I'm sure the uncrustable peanut butter is like all natural, organic, like good for yeah, you. Yeah, it's it's for like sure. twig and berry. Where can you find the ne the neckbeard granola eating uncrustables? That's where I want. That's what I want to know. I'm sure if you wander around Whole Foods, they have some version of uncrustables. I bet if I go to Carborough, I can totally find them. They're vegan and <laughs> made of hemp seed flour. <laughs> All right. Hemp God. butter. That was our Uncrustable segment for the night. <laughs> yeah. So, Tom, I want to start with what your overall impressions of the weekend as a whole were. Did you en did you have a good – did you enjoy WrestleMania weekend as a whole this year? What? As a, as a whole, it was an enjoyable thing. Um uh, I really did get to watch the Hall of Fame speeches. I, I kind of wanted to, just out of some kind of morbid curiosity. Uh, nothing went too extreme, I guess, because there really wasn't that much news that came out of it. Right. 
Uh, there was there was more news I think that came out of the commercial bumper that played in the middle of the Hall of Fame ceremony of upcoming WWE Network programming than the actual Hall of Fame ceremony itself. Yeah, let's... but oh, go ahead, finish, and then we'll dive no. into that. Sorry. Well, you asked me a question, so I was I actually going to answer the question. Sorry, I'm I'm but... so I'm so amped up on Red Bull and uh, what is it, Mountain Dew Kickstart. But I don't know what to do. There's another potential sponsor right there. Um, <laughs> but all in all, I mean, outside of, I mean, and Mania was a marathon, not a sprint. And yeah, I was in need of sleep at that point. So it, it, it was difficult staying up past midnight oh. to finish <laughs> Mania to the point where I was near delirium during the Roman Reigns um uh, Brock Lesnar match. But, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well. I mean, I I enjoyed it. I, I I love WrestleMania weekend. It's it's you know it's the Christmas of wrestling pretty much. It is right. Um. So I too enjoyed the hell out of the whole weekend. Um. We we don't have time to dive into all the indie bullshit that happened. And I shouldn't say bullshit. because uh, it was all very good. Um, I do want to give credit to the gimmick battle royal at Joy Janela's spring break, and the uh, pile driver spot on the invisible on the invisible wrestler. Uh, they got the kid ejected by the Louisiana State Athletic Commission. <laughs> uh, very, brilliant. Somewhere Cornette had a stroke when he saw that. Um, <laughs> uh, also, Matt Riddle's blood sport. I think we talked about that show a little bit last week. Uh, what I've seen of it, very good. Just something different to watch in a weekend of just a lot of normal wrestling. Nice to have an alternative. All, yeah, all, all grappling. So cool. It's it's weird to see the... I mean, there really hasn't been work shoot stuff since, I don't know, in Japan you had, like, rings and... Uh, those type of like shoot promotions, UWFI. Uh, so that maybe there's a little opening for a comeback there. I don't know. Yeah. I think there's definitely a market for it, especially on a weekend like this. Yeah. Um, so that's all I have to really say about the Indies. I haven't watched Supercard of Honor or anything like that yet. And it'll be a while before I do because I need a break tomorrow from anything wrestling related. So I was like, I'm really glad today I just get to sit and talk about it rather than watch any of it. It's nice to have that moment. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's go through the weekend in WWE kind of day by day, I guess. Uh, starting with uh, starting with Friday with the Hall of Fame. You kind of touched on that. It was a pretty – it was a tame Hall of Fame, all things considered. There weren't any – it's like the years when we had Warrior or Jake coming back, and we're like, what the hell are they going to say? Yeah. What's going to happen? You know, we didn't have that, which is a good thing, because it, at least you know what's going to happen. Uh, all the speeches were great. Ivory's was very stilted, but it was still good. It's Ivory. I love her. Uh, it was great to see the Dudley boys put a random guy, production guy, through a table. <laughs> uh, the, the, the two moments that stand out to me... Uh, one, uh, Kid Rock saying he's going, to, he wants to body slam Democrats, and AJ Styles and Kurt Angle losing their shit laughing at it. Cool, real cool, guys. Uh, Spoiler: most rich people are actually Republicans. Right. Yeah. Uh, most. Re well, I, don't, I shouldn't say that. I don't know. I'm gonna hold myself back from that statement. Um, just a thing, you know. Whatever. Fuck that. But. Whatever. Pe people have their own opinion. Let me rephrase that. Here's. Okay. Yeah, let's not go down that road. I was going to say, here's the good thing about America. Everyone's entitled to their opinion and their right to express it. So, yeah. good on you. Uh, the other most important notable moment was during Mark Henry's speech. Did you see this? I'm surprised you did not openly call this out, Tom. No. So, Mark Henry's talking about uh, being really good friends with Owen. This is why I thought oh, you would speak to this. Yes. Um, and Mark Henry kind of turns and looks directly into the hard cam and says, you know, zoom it, zoom it in really close. And Mark Henry starts to tear up. 
and he starts like pleading to the camera, talking to Martha Hart. Owen deserves to be here. This is his home. This is his birthright. Let him in. And I was like, oh shit. <laughs> shit got real. Yeah. And uh I mean I I get where Martha comes from, do not get me wrong. But at the same time, Mark is more correct in this in this situation. And I know of all people you yeah. would love to see Owen Hart uh in the WWE Hall of Fame. Yeah, I mean it's and and the thing is at this point for the most part you're not really making any money off of him. You're not no. I mean and they've already sold a DVD of him. Right. Which which I own on Blu-ray. Um but outside of you know having a t-shirt, I think they make t-shirts of all the Hall of Fame inductees each uh-huh. year. This isn't necessarily a money grab. Uh, people are going to the Hall of Fame anyway. This is more symbolic than anything else, and to pay the respect. And you had – it's funny because you had Mark Henry in there, and and Mark's one of those guys that back in the dressing room is one of the sweetest people in the world. And I still remember the day after – but uh, I'll uh, call it, you know, Roz Owen. Um, and just seeing Mark Henry, this massive man, just completely lose it because he was so heartbroken losing Owen. Right. And it's weird to me, too, because you had him. And the other one, other person that I remember the most from that whole thing was Jeff Jarrett, who also was inducted on Friday, uh, because he and Owen were tagging on the regular at that time, mm-hmm. and they had really gotten to be close because they were similar wrestlers, uh, and, and they just, if you listen to Pritchard talk about Owen and uh, in the Owen episode he had and the Jarrett episode he had, <clears throat> they had got really tight. And it really affected him, too. So I just found it interesting that he went in that direction. And I don't know if he went after Jeff Jarrett did or if... He did. Okay. So part of me wonders that if Mark Henry had said something before Jeff Jarrett went up, if Jeff also would have echoed the sentiment that... Uh, Mark Henry did in regards to Owen. Right. Um, can I make one other what should be non-controversial statement about the Hall of Fame? Sure. Stop letting Dana Warrior talk ever. Yes. Um, one, the Warrior Award is misconstrued. This is brought up every year. Whatever. When Warrior said there should be a reward, it should be for the backstage people. Anyway. Should they have an award for inspirational figures? Yeah, cool. Whatever. That's great. It's great philanthropy for the company. Um, right. But when Dana Warrior comes out and proceeds to talk about her husband for 20 minutes and then goes, all right, and here's some kid. Um, I hate that. I really, really hate that. Yeah. It bothers me. And it bothers me to put it in the context of someone that it was – and I, you know, I don't know what Warrior's I, – I, you know, truth time. I didn't know Warrior. Oh my God, crazy. Um, but I, you know, I don't know what Warrior's thoughts were or his personal views were later in his life, and I don't know that a lot of people do, other than Dana and his family. But to be someone that was such an outspoken bigot and such a hateful person, um, it just it feels wrong every year, and I hate it every year. Yeah, and it, it just. But this is from the same company that's like, we're going to have the greatest Royal Rumble in Saudi Arabia and take all this money. But, you know, the women can't come, even though we're all about inclusion and the women's revolution. But they have a fiduciary responsibility with that. So, uh, you know, whatever. But it's so much money. It is. It is. And that's, you know, and here's my, my take on that. Let's go into greatest Royal Rumble takes for a second as a sidebar. 
if this if this first one is a step into them being able to get women into the country to perform, great. Show that that's what you're trying to do. Then I'm all for it. Because, you know, even though we had, you know, you look at the match Sasha and Alexa had in Dubai back in December, if I remember correctly, November, December. Um, Something like that. Yes, they had to conform with with dress a little bit differently. But they were able to do something, and yes, there had been a women's match before, but to, on on the, the platform that WWE has to do it, that makes it a, a much bigger deal. So if that's what they're attempting to pull off in Saudi Arabia, more power to them. But show that you, that's what you, you know, I would love to see Stephanie or someone be like, you know, we understand that can be done at this time, and because we want to respect the the culture and this and that and the other, but, you know, we are constantly in conversation with the government of Saudi Arabia uh, to foster a climate of inclusivity and diversion, uh, not in diversion, and, and of diversity for our performers and for the people of the country. Just a, sta- a statement like that, at least. I don't know. It just feels weird yeah, to me. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's from the company it's from the company that runs the Warrior Award, so who who gives a shit? I think it's still you know, it's it's baby steps here and there and yeah. but I think I think there is a metric crap ton of money involved in regards to this Saudi Arabia deal. Yeah. And I think it's I think it's really a case of let's get this first thing in. And then we can worry about exactly the next steps. Yep. And uh, we don't know the – on the Postmania investors call that they had on Monday, uh, George Barrios was asked point blank about the valuation of that deal. It's something they're not disclosing at this time, but will have to be part of their Q2 filings. Uh, so come uh, – I guess that would be April, May, June, July or August uh, when we have the uh, Q2 call. We'll know more about the valuation of that deal. So that will be a very interesting moment, I think. It's something yeah, I mean, that nerds I mean, out on the business end of this company. They are, they are pulling out all the stops for that card. I mean, they're bringing Jericho in, Taker's wrestling. Like, why is Taker wrestling? Why is Taker wrestling? It just We'll get to that later. Yeah. <laughs> We'll get to that in about uh, 17 hours. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Hall of Fame was fun. It, it's always fun. It's fun to see everybody back. So, that was Friday. Now let's move on to Saturday. Yep. NXT TakeOver New Orleans. From the Smoothie King Center. I don't even know where to begin. I guess we begin from the beginning. That's the only logical way to do this. Well, there were dark matches, but they were. But those aired they tonight. Were uh, what was yeah. it not? God, I can't. Uh, war. God, what are they called? Not war. They're not War Machine anymore. Damn it! They were at the tapings tonight. NXT tapings. Yeah. Say a word tonight, and I need to look this up because it's driving me crazy. Wars, war Raiders. Wars in there. War Raiders. There yeah. we go. Thank you, Twitter. Um, they debuted officially. So let's start with the ladder match for the inaugural NXT North American Championship between Adam Cole, EC3, Killian Dane, Lars Sullivan, Ricochet, and Velveteen Dream. Um, I thought each of them were going to die at some point or multiple points. That's amazing. That is the first time you've ever said the name Adam Cole without <laughs> saying the rest of his name. Well, I, I was saving it for the most important part of this conversation, Tom. Okay. The winner and first ever NXT North American champion, Adam Cole, baby! There we go. That's what we're waiting for. Yeah. Not a surprise. But Not a surprise. No. Um, I EC- think he was the favorite going in. For sure. Um EC3 was kind of a non-factor in this match, I think, to the surprise of many. That was a lot of the reaction I saw online. Spent a lot of time outside of the match. Uh, Lars Sullivan just is a hoss. Along with Killian Day. Yeah. 
which he, uh, was, he was kind of fun to watch. Minor NXT spoiler. So skip ahead 30 seconds. Uh, if you don't want to hear this, uh, they taped a no DQ match between Lars and Killian tonight at full sale. And somehow the building is still oh, standing. Jesus. Um, Ricochet is still one of the most amazing wrestlers in the world. Yeah. Do, just for that to be your your first true ma- like your first true match in. Like what an impression leave. And of course, you know, this is in front of the WrestleMania NXT audience that is well accustomed to knowing who Ricochet is already. Right. But Jesus Christ. <laughs> he just amazes hey, me was... every time. I was watching that match with my son and he, it took him maybe 15 seconds to love Ricochet. Oh yeah. I mean, he just, just started watching and Ricochet did some flip off of something. And he's just like, he is so cool. And he was, he just started pulling for him the rest of the match. Yeah. The kid's money. And I say kid because he's, you know, four months younger than I am. But the kid's fucking money, Tom. And here's the worst part. I have this deep-seated fear for him that he's going to end up at 205 Live. Now, 205 Live, again, in a much better place than it was three months ago. Okay? So it's not, it's not, but he is main event wwe championship quality in personality in presence in his work there's just something about ricochet that i've always thought was just above and beyond he has a charisma to him and yep. it just and the other person i feel that way about is velveteen dream oh whoever would have thought now, I mean, we all knew Patrick Clark was good, right? But then you see him come out with this gimmick, and you're like, oh, Jesus, where the hell is this going to go? Yeah. It's so good. And my biggest fear is that Vince sees this and goes, oh, that's hilarious. And he gets put paired with Brizongo. Right? <laughs> I mean. Yeah, I could kind of see that. I can see Vince slotting in there, but, like, he could work. He's got, he's got his character down, one hundred percent. I even saw this thing on Reddit that he's signing. Uh, uh, when he was signing at Access, he was signing with as uh, Your God, which is something Prince used to do when he would sign autographs. He didn't sign his name; he signs Your God. What a little, what a great tiny detail to have down as yeah. your character as a twenty-two-year-old. Yeah, and that that's the thing that, like, amazes the shit out of me, is just to see that he has so much of his career in front of him. Yep. So, great match. Uh, five stars. Five stars all around. I don't, I can't tell you any of the spots from it, because it feels like it was six months ago that I watched it. But watch it. I, I will knock it down just a little tiny bit, because this is personal prejudice of mine. I hate ladder matches. And it's not for any reason, I think, except that I understand these people are human beings and a ladder match, I think, takes several years off of your life. And it makes me cringe watching them. It's one thing to watch somebody like bounce off a steel cage and, you know, gig himself and whatever. Yeah, that's fine. That's whatever. Even taking, like, you know, ridiculous spots off of the top rope or whatever, that's fine. But, I mean, yeah, just the ladder spots and just falling off of ladders from ridiculous things and doing spots off of the ladders and just... That elbow like, Velveteen get... pulled off the top of the ladder. <sighs> like, that made my hip hurt. Like, yeah. I saw it, I was like, Nope. I need to go to the chiropractor just from watching Randy it. Sa- Randy Savage uh, sent a tear down from heaven. Uh, a singles match for the NXT Women's Championship was up next, where Shayna Baszler beat the fuck out of Ember Moon for 12 minutes and 56 seconds. I mean, 
Ember got some shit in, don't get me wrong. But we knew this is how this match would end. It was time. Ember had nothing left to do in NXT. We discussed yeah. this last week. Uh, and it's time to have another unbeatable top heel at NXT. It's how we kind of expected the last match to go. And then Ember pulled off the win, which yeah. actually I think was kind of cool. You know, oh, it, I love it. It worked last one. in that sense. But. Yeah, it was it take over uh, Philly? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. I enjoyed it last time. I was like, oh, shit. I wasn't expecting it. I like that. Because so you were pissed off at that match. Was I? Going into it. Going into it. Because you were oh. like, there's there's no positive outcome of this match. Because either you're going to make Baszler look weak because she can't beat Ember Moon. Yeah. Or. Hunter proved yeah, me wrong. Yeah. You're, you're digging yourself into a hole. It's like, nope. Nope. This is how we're doing it. And it worked out well. It did. It's perfect. So congrats to Shayna Baszler. Um, I don't know where her spoilers stand because I haven't looked at the spoilers that much today. Uh, in the next match, the NXT Tag Team Championship and Dusty Road Tag Team Classic Trophy were on the line, uh, where Pete Dunn and Roderick Strong teamed up to face the Authors of Pain and the Undisputed Era, represented by Adam Cole, baby, and Kyle O'Reilly, uh, since Bobby Fish is out injured. Um, pretty standard triple threat tag team match. Authors of Pain in the some sense guys. Yeah, it, it was five of them because Adam Cole spent most of the match on the uh, – after being – what was it? What was he powerbombed into the yeah, – uh, AOP powerbombed into a table, and I was like, good for Adam Cole. He gets a little – he gets some rest. I'm proud of Adam. He did all right. <laughs> like, he just kind of crawled up and took a nap. I was like, he deserves that in the best possible way. <laughs> um, of course, the Undisputed Era wins uh, after – Roderick Strong turns heel, attacks Pete Dunn, and pulls Kyle O'Reilly on top of him for the pin. It was a beautiful turn. It was so well done and so unexpected. Like, it's one of those things if you think about how many times have the Undisputed Era come to Roderick Strong and been like, you sure you don't want to join us? You want to join us? Hey, buddy. And he's like, no, fuck you. But now... Uh, he decided to do it when he knew he had no other no other route to gold. And so I'm interested to see him explain himself in the coming weeks. Yeah. But I mean, it was just so beautiful because you went into it and you saw, it, it was just that rolling momentum of like done and strong. You know, like the AOP is on the outside, so they're not they're not going to get involved. Adam Cole's dead. Kyle O'Reilly's all alone. Pete Dunn, you know, catches him, reverses him, hits the hits the finisher, and Roddy's in the corner. Pete Dunn makes the cover. Everything's perfectly set. We've got new champions. One, two, and Roddy breaks up the pin. Yeah, and just spins it right it was... into his finisher lays yeah. him out drags over a completely confused Kyle O'Reilly and then after the pinfall just like the constant stares of O'Reilly and Adam Cole just looking at Roddy Strong were just yeah. I was in complete shock yeah it was so good it was fun it was a really fun it was a it was a horseman like turn yeah for sure. Roderick Strong in his shitty little boots. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up, the final undercard match. The NXT Championship is on the line. <laughs> Where Aleister Black takes the strap off Adrian Cien Almas. Okay, one. Fuck Zelina Vega. She's such a pest, and she's so amazing at it. Fuck her. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, also, Aleister Black. Just so amazing. Just such a presence. Yeah. 
Um, and Almas, just the, the height he's risen to in six months is so great. You think of it's, where he started when he came into NXT with the suspenders and the fedora, man. And everyone's like, okay. He was like the other No Way Jose. <laughs> He was. I remember was. seeing him initially. I'm just like, is he like No Way Jose's partner? Yep. Thank God they didn't pull the trigger on that, and they waited for Zelina Vega to show up. Oh, Thea Trinidad. Jesus. But I, I just remember seeing like, and just that that was the argument was so long was, have we completely wasted this incredibly talented performer? Right. We went, we, you know, he's got no mask, so we realize, oh, he's a handsome man. And he he's just out there and putting over other people or opening up the card, and it's like, Shit. what are we doing with him? Yeah, sorry. You're just a myth, you're bald. And oh. then suddenly, out of nowhere, it's just that he gets partnered with Zelina Vega, and, you know, they stuck a rocket up his ass, and shot yeah. him all the way at the top yep they finally made the gimmick work uh but yeah and it was time it was time for him to lose the belt for sure yeah like he, oh, he was a good champion I mean, for six months uh spoiler alert wish he would have gotten the call up but who knows we have the superstar shakeup next week so he could yeah. still he could still appear it's still an option on the table yeah, I mean that was that was one of the things that happened the last. Sorry, my cat's an asshole. Um, <laughs> what what is Ernest Miller doing in your house? Uh, shuffling and then knock over Dave Meltzer book. Oh, okay. So, way to stay on theme, cat. <laughs> anyway, we have a, you... we have a podcast. Are we supposed to bitch for forty minutes, five minutes straight about Dave Meltzer? No. Someone else took that Good. gimmick. We can put the people Good. to get downloads. Yeah. Then. But, oh, yeah. Go ahead. No, nah, I was just going to say. Just, but yeah. But I don't even know what I was going to say. Go continue. All right. Uh, Ignore me. I'm not here. Then in the final match of the night, the main event of the evening, an unsanctioned match with his re- The main event of the year. Oh, Jesus, right? With his reinstatement to NXT on the line, Johnny Gargano defeated that fucker Ciampa. Okay, so I know how we hate <laughs> NXT crowds because NXT crowds are their, their own gimmick. Right. They made this match work even that much better. Can I just say all weekend including Raw and SmackDown, I am very proud of every crowd that went into a WWE venue because they did not try to get themselves over. Yeah. The entire, including Smarkamania, including Raw after Mania, they played yeah. along with the whole show. I was so proud of them. Now, I can't, I, Mania got a little out of hand, but that was during hour six of seven, and I can't fucking blame you for that. Right. But on the whole, good on you, everyone that went to New Orleans. You did good. I'm finally proud of you. <laughs> but this match, man, 37 minutes, and it did not seem like 37 minutes. No. I fucking cried, Tom. <laughs> Jesus, when we, yeah, to, when we got to the point where they were recreating Gargano, uh, pulling himself towards jump and grabbing his knee pad and pulling himself up, I was like, oh, fuck the feels man all all of the callbacks to this entire feud in one match just <sighs> it was so perfectly my... constructed let's start from the beginning okay. let's start from Ciampa coming out with no entrance music just to the chorus of 18,000 boos in the Smoothie King Center uh, amazing choice first I thought Dolph Ziggler was coming out <laughs> but it wasn't. It was that fucker Champa. 
and to see him coming out in complete silence with everyone holding up the Johnny Gargano logo yeah, on paper. I'm like, good on you to have those printed out and ready, WWE. Good work. And then, of course, Johnny to come out to just this gigantic fucking pop because he's Johnny Wrestling. Second biggest pop of the weekend? Oh, God. No, hold on. It's tough. <laughs> it's tough because... List. It's tough because of different arena sizes. Yeah, it's hard to it's a hell of a lot, It's a hell of a lot easier to pop a 16,000 indoor crowd than it is to pop the Superdome. Seth probably got the most consistent big pops of the weekend, though. So if I want to give big pop cred, I'm going to give it to Seth Rollins for this weekend. Over Ronda okay. Rousey. Okay, the Brian guy did nothing for you. You know, he got a good pop, but I don't think it was Seth Rollins level, man. Like, he did not get as big of a pop as I expected. I expected the roof to blow off the place. The roof shook a little bit. Yeah. Like, I expected... I mean, I'll agree with you there. Yeah. I expected this to be like full Katrina ripping the roof off the Superdome kind of force of pop, okay? For Brian. And that may be too soon, and I really don't give a shit, because I thought that joke was funny. But, no, it wasn't. So, that's just my thoughts. No, oh, I have two cats at the door. I hear that. Is the other one, uh, Jerry Lawler's girlfriend? <laughs> you that's have Miss a... Kitty to you. You have <laughs> Wow, we just went. Speaking of Jerry Lawler, uh, puppies. You, you heard you heard what his podcast co-host said today, right? On Reddit, that he that he almost died again. He fucking had a stroke three weeks ago. But he had still, a stroke was, was in the ICU and then apparently like came to consciousness and was perfectly fine. Jerry Lawler. <laughs> To not only do commentary for WrestleMania, but to also shoot a fireball at Joey, <laughs> Joey Ryan's, Ryan's crotch. <laughs> yeah. Joey Ryan doing the full uh, Andy Kaufman gimmick and cutting an entire Andy Kaufman promo. <laughs> God bless Joey Ryan. Like, part of me's like, yes, he should come to WWE, but at the same time, I'm like, no, don't just leave him out there. He's perfect out there. Yeah. Uh, so, did we want to get back to Gargano? Yes. Champa? Let's go. <sighs> yeah. It was just... I wasn't sure how long you were going to talk about it. It was... I mean, it's one of those things... I could talk about it for an hour. But we're already 44 minutes into this pod... Or, well, 44 minutes you and I have been on the phone together. So, let's say 40 minutes we've been doing this podcast already, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> and we haven't even gotten to Mania. So my one spot uh, for the Gargano Champa match, uh, because like you said, they did pull a lot of. Uh, I mean, th it's the whole thing about this match was it told a story, it told a hell of a story, and they harkened back to the entire feud and you know all these little things, but there was a spot that wasn't necessarily from their feud. Um, Gargano has the crutch, and he bent it enough, so it ended up breaking most of it off, right. and he had just kind of like the end of it or whatever. That that first top part where the padding is and just like kind of the two prongs down. Mm -hmm. And he's got it. And he's looking at Ciampa, who's, like, sitting on the ground at this point, and he's, like, hovering over him, like, I'm going to impale you with this. Ciampa's just, like, can't put up a defense at this point. And he, like, thinks about it, and he's holding it. And as he's doing that, and I know it was working to another spot, all I could think of is Magnum TA, Tully Blanchard, I quit, in Starcade 85. Where 
the chair gets thrown into the cage and gets broken into pieces and Magnum takes the part of the chair and is ready to like impale Tully's head with it and that's what actually gets Tully to say I quit yeah so it just just watching it from that imagery just like it also has that's what it reminded me of and of course that's something Triple H would think of being the history buff that he is like yep but at the same time it also had that weird like I'm sorry I love you aspect to it yeah of <sighs> I, I've got to end this because that's what I have to do but at the same time like you're still my brother. Oh God, damn a it! A little Tom. bit, a little bit of that, that, that Sean Ric Flair WrestleMania retirement match. Jesus. Um, and then for him to turn around and like sit next to him in like, that whole, I, I don't want to forgive you, but like they did I, the I, cruiserweight I, classic. Yeah. Oh. But for Gargano to not be the total idiot babyface and to know that Ciampa was just looking and expecting him to do yep. that and expecting that fucker was waiting for him <laughs> yeah to expect the <laughs> to know that the double cross was coming and to double cross the double cross and to rip his to rip his knee brace off and, and lock in the Gargano escape <laughs> with the knee brace. Yeah. And bent it all the way back. Yeah. It was so good. And the crowd lost their mind. And of course, then Candace came out, and I'm crying, and she's crying, and everybody's crying. God damn it, I love wrestling. If you're watching what I was watching right now, you would not love wrestling. Oh, no. We don't have time for that tonight. No. <laughs> Uh, so that was Satan involves May Young. Is she giving birth to a hand, Tom? No, this is much worse. She's pulled off her dress and is now doing a Bronco Buster on Eric Bischoff's face. So if you need bleach, there's one place you can buy it to clean out your eyes, Tom. You know Where's where that, that is? Say? It's Amazon.com. Oh, yeah, they have everything there. I hear. I hear they have a lot of uh, equipment to build a new podcasting studio as well. But we'll get to that. Have you built a wish list? Uh, nope. It's just in my cart. <laughs> oh. That's kind of like a wish list. Well, you know what I'm going to do before I make a purchase of, a, of like a bunch of equipment, Tom? Uh, check your checking account balance. Okay, yeah, well, that's step one. So after I check my checking account balance, what am I going to do, Tom? Are, are you going to uh, Amazon.com directly? Nope. nope, you dick. You, oh. you fucked up. When you, oh. when you do that, you hear 18,000 people chanting, you fucked up, you fucked up. You're going to go to cheatersneverpin.com first. And you're gonna oh, click... I love that website. Yeah, it's good. It's good, but there's content there. And... <laughs> well, if we don't take it away, it's there. It's That's just, true. You know. you know, It's the archives. Really, cheatersneverpin.com is our archive. Yeah. So when you go to cheatersneverpin.com, one of the first things you see at the top is a button that says buy on Amazon. I want you to click that button, and I want you to buy your shit. Because when you do that, uh, it kicks a few cents back to the podcast to help us pay for all of our hosting and all the other miscellaneous needs of the podcast. Much like this Tom's Uncrustables. Yeah. And JC's doing some shopping of his own. Yeah. <laughs> can, I, can I take the kickback money back? Is that okay? <laughs> can I call the CFO of Section 328 and be like, hey, so about all this shit, can I just get that money back? I've gonna, heard that one or two other 328 no. people actually listen to the podcast, so you never know. Yeah, let's see. I don't know if the CFO listens to this. The CFO dollar sign of the podcast. I haven't <laughs> looked at the flow chart yet of um, where we actually are. Yeah, I don't know what our, what our titles are. I don't think we have them, Tom. I mean, I think they exist, but... Anyway, before you do Amazon shopping, go to cheatersneverpin.com, click the Amazon button on the front page, uh, do your shopping like normal, and it kicks a few cents back uh, to us. And we appreciate your patronage of Cheaters Never Pin. Doesn't cost you anymore, but, you know. Damn it, we make some money, you bastards. Yeah. 
It really is the least you can do. Oh God, I'm so really. Sick. Yeah, it is. I'm so tired. <laughs> All right, here we go. Speaking of tired, WrestleMania 34 in the oh, yeah. Superdome, brother. Tom, Tom. One of those places. Tom's yawning. I'm yawning. I haven't uh, gotten sleep since like Thursday. So, um, overall thoughts on WrestleMania? Because I think we can blow through WrestleMania pretty quickly, in all honesty. My God, I mean, I know we said it was seven hours, but like we knew that going into it, and still it felt like it was a chore. It did. I enjoyed the first five hours. I enjoyed the last two. Don't get me wrong, but Jesus. I mean, it's it's funny almost that like it almost drops off like in the after the first half. And if you if you take out pre-show, I mean, it, that's the first what like three matches. Yeah. Yeah. But but anyway, let's just dive into it. Uh, first stop on the pre-show was the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, won by Matt Hardy, assisted by a returning Bray Wyatt. <laughs> uh, I mean, that was cool. That was good to see. I'm down with that. And, of course, uh, Bray showed up and teamed with Matt on Monday night, which was also cool. By the way, we're going um, to work Raw and SmackDown into this part of the show because – Ain't nobody got the time to re- rehash that shit separately. Yeah, just going through order of elimination so we know who was actually in the thing. Aiden English, Connor, Kurt Hawkins, our truth came back. Hi, our truth. Yeah, with braids. Uh, I, I saw him. I saw him, and I was like, "What the fuck is that?" Yeah. And I was like, "Oh, it's our truth." Uh, Primo Cologne, Mike Canellis. New dad. Congrats. Uh, Tyler Breeze, Victor, Zack Ryder, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, uh, Apollo, Don't Call Me Cruz, Sheldon Benjamin, uh, Rhino, Dash Wilder, Scott Dawson, Bo Dallas, Curtis Axel, Sin Cara, Fandango, uh, Heath Slater, Chad Gable, Titus O'Neil, Goldust, Ty Dillinger, Dolph Ziggler, Kane, Mojo Raleigh, and Baron Corbin. Yep. It was a battle royal. That's all I have to yep. say. It got everybody a paycheck. Yep. That's all it's there for. It was fun. Whatever. I enjoyed it. It was the first match of the night. I was hype as hell. So, I, cool. I wanted intros, but yeah. who, who the hell am I? Uh, the second match of the pre-show, the finals of the Cruiserweight Championship Tournament. Cedric Alexander defeats Mustafa Ali. North Carolina goes two for two. Off the bat. Not the outcome I was expecting. To be honest. I mean, I was just for the fact that, like, Cedric was due the belt. Oh, for sure. I'm not going to dispute that. Match was a bit underwhelming. Yeah. But they worked the WWE cruiserweight style. So when you look at it in that context, it was a good match. Yeah, I, when I uh, what I said online, it, it was fine. It was disappointing if you put it next to recent two hundred five matches. Oh but, yeah. I mean, for what it was with Vince calling the shots and that type of thing, it was it was fine. These are two guys that can work their asses off, and then rematches and stuff like that on two hundred five. They'll put on a hell of a lot better matches than they did here, but yeah, again, just, and putting it in the context of like other matches that you'd see in the night, it's it, it was good. It was still a good match. Yeah, it was enjoyable. Uh, the first ever quote unquote WrestleMania Women's Battle Royal, Naomi eliminates Bailey last after Bailey thinks she won after eliminating Sasha Banks. Yep, it was a battle royal. Woo. This one actually had some call-ups in it. Or, Did we have... I say call-ups. So there weren't really call-ups uh, necessarily. Kate but... Royce was there. Kyrie Sane was there. 
Who else was in this shit? Let me pull up the list. Uh, uh Vegeta Devi was there. Yep. Uh, look at Tanara the Conti. Bianca Belair. Dakota uh, Kai. Helicopter hair. So yeah, I mean it was cool to see that. Um, coming out of this, I guess the the women of Absolution were in this, and so getting to Absolution, Paige officially announced her retirement Monday on Raw from in ring competition due to her neck injuries. Uh, sad moment for yeah. sure, especially at her age. Very sad to see because she she was a very good performer. Yeah. Um, but she got redemption the following night on SmackDown Live as she was announced the new general manager since Dan O'Brien has stepped away from general manager duties to become an active competitor. And that is the perfect role for her because the girl can talk. So I'm super, yeah. I'm 100% down for this. Yeah, I, I mean, as long as, as can she, can she stop the movie promos? Hello, Paige here. Did you see that on Reddit they were proposing that Paige here and that that face should be the new H face replacement? <laughs> yes. I was like, oh no. I feel bad because she got ragged on Paige hard is... all weekend, yo. Paige is not an attractive woman, but God, that picture is just <laughs> it's it's the perfect screen grab of how can we make someone look as horrible as possible. Yeah. So, um. All right, then the main card started. It started unexpectedly with the I I C triple threat match, where Seth Rollins burned down the competition <laughs> and beat the Miz and Finn Balor uh, to secure his Grand Slam. Cool. Don't forget Finn Balor pissing off uh, a percentage oh, yeah. of wrestling fandom Finn Balor came out in his Finn Balor's for everyone gear which is the Balor Club logo in rain in pride colors in the rainbow uh which is available on WWE shop right now and I think it's through the end of the month they donate a certain percentage of the proceeds from that to Vlad um 20 percent of the a actual price of the shirt oh, not net better. proceeds you're not better. skim off the top or anything like that yeah so, I, I was impressed. I had to go to the website to take a look at that. And yeah, that's, that's, cool. that's actually I've, good. I've not bought mine yet, but you know, I own every other piece of Finn Balor merch they've ever produced. And of course I will be buying this one. Uh, I will um, be too, because my wife commanded me to. <laughs> um, so yeah. And he came out with a bunch of, I don't know exactly the group. I can't remember what they said, but it was a, uh, an LGBT Alliance group from new Orleans that escorted him out. Cool to see. If you got a problem with that, fuck you. Stop listening to this show. I don't want your fucking money. Don't click on any of our fucking links. Go the fuck away. Yeah. Um, so that was, yep. So that was cool. Miz came out in full Naruto gear. <laughs> 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 Which was neat. Uh, and Seth Rollins came out uh, blue contacts and all, pretending he was from Game of Thrones. That's what I'm told. I don't know. I've never watched Game of Thrones. So, whatever. That was the thought. I haven't watched Game of Thrones either, but I was like, is he supposed to be like the ice people? That's what everyone on Twitter and Reddit said. They're like, oh my god, you fucking... And they, whatever, some some name. And I was like, okay, cool. Uh, good match. Really, really good pace to start the show. We knew it was going to yeah. be a good match. Uh, and it delivered exactly... I don't think it under-delivered or over-delivered. It was exactly what we thought it would be, and it was great. Yeah. Not a super memorable match. But, you know, it was a seven-hour show, so. <laughs> no, and it, it's, I mean, it, it, it sucks to say it from the competitors that are there, but it's a warm-up match. Oh, yeah, and it did its, it's job. The crowd was hot as fuck when Seth won. It, yeah, it, it got, I mean, it got the crowd going, which is great. And But in hindsight, you probably should have had a warm-up match like this later on. When the crowd was getting tired and needed a yeah. little bit more excitement, but definitely hindsight 2020 and all. Right. Um, all these guys remain in the Intercontinental title picture, joined by a returning Jeff Hardy. On Who is not Raw. broken nor woken. No. He's, uh, Bray Wyatt uh, acknowledged him as Brother Nero backstage on Monday in possibly one of the best backstage statements ever created. Where Matt and uh, Jeff have a conversation, and Jeff's congratulating Matt on winning, and then 
Wyatt shows up and he calls Jeff Brother Nero and they hug and everybody's all happy and then the camera pans and Seth and Finn are standing there very confused as to what the hell just happened in front of them. Very well done. Matt even acknowledged that uh, Jeff had gotten over his condition. Yeah. So. And of course, you know, Jeff knowing what's going on is speaking in uh, Woken language to Woken Matt Hardy. It was, it, was, right. it was really good. I enjoyed that segment a lot. Um, in what was possibly the best match of the evening, really it stole the show, in my opinion, Tom. The, the preeminent moment that everyone will remember from this WrestleMania. Asuka lost her streak. In a singles match for the WWE Women's Championship, Charlotte Flair retained it. I'm glad it happened because after watching uh, Finn Balor lose, you knew I was about to break things. I, I was you concerned I for the people who lived in your building. <laughs> you know, I was good with Finn losing there. Honestly, it was such a good match. I'm like, you know what? He he got some good shine on him in that match. I was not upset about it. Because it is, everyone looked good in that match, and Rollins ended up winning, but nobody. But like you said, nobody looked weak in that. Every, it, yeah. Everybody rose up a little bit from but that. No one looked as good on Sunday as Charlotte. Starting from her entrance. Coming out, circle WrestleMania 30 with the throne, with Tino Sabatelli and two other NXT guys, who I can't remember who they were, being taken off the throne and, and derobed, just like Triple H at WrestleMania 30. It was a shot-for-shot shot recreation of that entrance. Yeah. And it was fucking amazing. Uh, yeah. And then my queen retained. And that's all that fucking matters. And then Oscar came out with the Sega CD graphics. <laughs> well, that was the second time we'd seen them on the night, because The Miz had them earlier with a bunch the of random Miz, fucking words. Those weren't that bad. No, it was a bunch of words. It was all his, like... I want to say, like, A-lister, blah, 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 blah. I don't know, a bunch of shit on the screen. Oscar just, just had a bunch of... watching the Oscar thing. She's just like, what the hell is this? This looks like something from, like, <laughs> 1996. Yeah, it was weird. Um, Really, really good match. Probably the best women's match in WWE in months. Yeah. Uh, and the right woman won. I honestly believe that because the streak was holding Asuka back. How do you how do you continue to book her in that pattern with the streak? Right. So the right decision was made, and everyone online who's like, my waifu lost, control your shit. The right decision was made. I mean, how do you want to see it end? Do you want to see it Goldberg end where fucking <laughs> Scott Hall has to show up with a goddamn cow taser. You cattle prod? <laughs> yeah. A cow taser. <laughs> I mean, that's essentially what it is. <laughs> yeah. Tell, tell, oh, feel free to correct me to tell me I'm wrong. No, Am I wrong? You're right. I've just never no. heard it referred to as a cow taser, and I love it. And that's also now the name of this episode is the cow taser edition. There you go. Glad uh... I can contribute. <laughs> <laughs> or um, the the ending that I had kind of half has predicted where Asuka would beat Charlotte Flair in a like match that pretty much takes 100% out of both of them only to see Carmella turn around, cash in money in the bank and screw over Asuka by beating a thoroughly defeated or exhausted Oscar. Right. Well, that would not happen on Sunday night, but Tuesday night. Wait for it. Charlotte comes out to address her uh, loyal subjects of the Queen Tuesday night, uh, and is confronted by the debuting iconics of Peyton Royce and Billy Kay. Now, I had no clue how to feel in this moment. Cause I love all of them. Okay. Like, let's be, let's be, let's be 100% straight up here. 
These are my three favorite, three of my four favorite women in WWE. And I had no clue how to deal with this moment at all. And then they fucking killed Charlotte. And I still didn't hate them. <laughs> but they still considered, they still cut one of their typical uh, Iconics promos. It was absolutely amazing. <laughs> Because they just sound just so demeaning and sh- just being like shitty, stuck-up little brats. Yeah. Um, so they lay out Charlotte and pretty much murder her and then stand there and pose. Uh, the refs finally get them out of the ring. Carmella's music hits. Carmella grabs Mike Kyoto by the arm, drags him to the ring with her. Uh, she proceeds to hand him the briefcase, which apparently Mike Kyoto had no clue Money in the Bank ever existed. There's still arguing over whether to start the match right now. <laughs> like, and I get you want to be like, no, like, and I get they want to sit at the angle of like, of course, Kyoto, you know, saw the condition Charlotte was in and didn't think it was the right time. Not his place. He's a fucking official. That's not what the contract says. So, uh, then Carmella cashes in, hits one big boot. One, two, three. We have a new SmackDown Women's Champion on SmackDown Live. I just called it SmackDown Live, didn't I? Being brought to you by those little devil's food marshmallow cookies. Oh, Jesus. Yes. Can we get that as a sponsor? We need our CFO to get to work on that. We need sponsorships. Yeah. Just, just, food. just we foods. Need food. We just need foods. Um, anyway, yeah. So Carmella is your new SmackDown Live Women's Champion. We knew it would happen at some point. Just yeah. purely based on the percentages of positive money in the bank cash-ins, and especially with this being the first women's one, you knew it would probably happen. But, uh, I mean, cool. I like the I fact no that problem I think with it. the WWE account posted, like, you know, like some statistics about it. Like, Carmella was the first WWE Women's Money in the Bank winner. She is also the first WWE Women's Money in the Bank winner to successfully cash in her Money in the Bank thing. Like, well, yes, she's one of one. She also held the case longer than anyone else in history. Yes. Male or female. Yep. So cool. I mean, the biggest gripe I saw were people like, why the fuck do you got to beat Oscar with Charlotte if Carmella is just going to just pin her clean i'm like okay here's the thing she didn't pin her clean she cashed in her money in the bank after she'd been beat down y'all like yeah, that's not a clean pin i get i get that technically like that is a clean pin but it's not because she cashed in her money in the bank after a beat right. down like it was not a fair fight it wasn't a straight up 20 minute battle that ended with carmella going over if that happened after she beat Asuka, yeah, I got a problem with it, too. Right. And you, again, you know how much I love Charlotte. This was the this was perfectly fine. This gives her a new feud. And who knows, Charlotte, the, probably by doing that, Charlotte's getting moved to Raw in the shakeup next week. Is yeah, what's happening. That. So, and that's the way to get the belt off of her and move her. And that's fine. Although I heard something about Carmella potentially going to Raw and um... <laughs> she's taking the belt with her, be like, "Fuck you." Who's the uh... Mr. Raw's woman's champion? I'm going completely. Oh, Naya. Naya, yeah. Spoiler: Naya won. And Naya going to SmackDown. I'm like, so what are they supposed to do? Like meet halfway and just switch belts with each other? Because literally, one is blue and the other one is red. They just have the opposite color on there just to fuck with everybody. It's just like, God damn it. I'm colorblind. The Intercontinental and, like, U.S. Championship where you can just kind of interchange them and associate it with one or the other. No, we've had to color code all the fucking belts now. Right. So nothing can really carry over anymore. All right. Except for those two. Yep. Uh, moving on, and I have no comments about this because who gives a fuck? Jinder Mahal is the new United States champion beating Randy Orton, Bobby Roode, and Rusev in a fatal four-way match. Cool. Saudi Arabia will love that. 
Yep. Rusev will be facing The Undertaker in a casket match at the Greatest Royal Rumble. <laughs> so, something, something, getting married, something, something. Yeah. Uh, and Randy Orton won a number one contender match on SmackDown Live, so yay, we get a, another Randy gender feud leading to backlash. Oh in boy. Saudi Arabia, in Saudi Arabia, they only call it prison. <laughs> I, th- I think the joke's India there, Tom. That's, yeah, but they don't they don't use Punjabi prisons all over. Well, I would assume if it's in Saudi Arabia and not in India, you'd call it a... It, it really, if it's not in Punjab, I guess you'd call it a Punjabi prison. It's not even really... I mean, the rest of India may have their own I, prison types. I mean, we're using Punjabi prisons apparently in America, so I just assumed oh, that yeah. this was just... I mean, that's how we settle things. It's tradition. <laughs> like our forefathers before us. Amen. That's what the Constitution's founded on, goddammit. Uh, pry that from my dead hands. Then, uh, really, really early in the show, for when I thought this match would actually fall, we had a mixed tag team match, didn't we, Tom? We did. We had Triple H and Stephanie McMahon riding in on a fleet of choppers. Because, of course, it's Triple H and Stephanie. Uh, Zed, Zed's dead, baby. Zed's dead. <laughs> uh, cool entrance, as always. Uh, they took on. They, it was they, it's Triple H on a bike. Let me fucking mark out for it again, please. Jesus, Tom. They they went like six feet. I don't give a shit. It's Triple H on a goddamn chopper at Mania. But they had Steph had to have her own fucking chopper. And that was even more badass, Tom. They ride together anyway. On giant tricycles. These aren't fucking motorcycles or goddamn tricycles okay i want one of those though like i'm gonna be honest i don't don't, because i don't feel i wouldn't feel safe on a motorcycle but on the fucking giant on the trikes fuck yeah the posse in front of them they look cool they can go but i mean you can take that bike you can circle around you know like being biker taker if you want to not the stupid tricycles they are able to go down the ramp and like park Oh yeah, speaking of Undertaker, we missed the at the end of the Charlotte Flair Oscar match. <laughs> Pause for a second and then back up. At the end of the Charlotte Flair Oscar match, uh, some referee walks out to Cena, who's been sitting in the audience the whole time, because we know that because they've shown him about 45 times at this point. Referee, drinking beers. <laughs> drinking beers. Uh, leans over to him and you, you see him whisper something in his ear and you hear him, you basically see him say, he's here. Cena hops the barricade and fucking sprints up the ramp. And the camera cuts back to Asuka and you see your mouth. That's John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hell yeah. Anyway. Uh, Triple H and Steph come out on their bikes. That was cool. Kurt Angle and Ronda Rousey come out. Kurt, Kurt Angle comes out in full GM, smiling, pointing, leading the You Suck chants, which I hated. Because, like, Kurt, you need to be in the zone here, buddy. You got a goddamn match. Focus for a second. You're not GM Kurt right now. You're Olympic goddamn gold medalist with a broken freaking neck, Kurt Angle. But they're the smiling, happy people. That's their Uh, tag team name. Then Ronda comes out, grinning ear to ear. Which, admittedly, she's loving the shit out of this. Yeah. Yeah, I would if I was making her paycheck, too. Jesus. But Rhonda's here. Yay. They come out. Um, Tom. In the like. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Tom, this was the match of the night. I thought you were going to mention how um, how Rhonda's outfit was, but. She was dressed like slutty Roddy Piper. Yeah. The end. Slut, but... Slutty MMA Roddy Piper. Cool. Yeah. But anyway. Now I'm picturing Roddy Piper in the exact same outfit. Just think about it for a second. Those of you listening, I want you to picture Roddy Piper in a really short kilt and uh, just below his his pecs length shirt, leather jacket. Now think about it. Okay, carry on, Tom. Okay. Just wanted everyone to get that image. Yeah, this was, I mean, first of all, this went 20 minutes, dude. 
Longest match on the show. Yeah. Like a four-way for the U.S. title goes eight. Yep. But this goes 20, and it was good. From beginning to end, Ronda, um, and of course she'd been preparing for this for months, so I don't know why I'm as surprised as I am, but Ronda looked really, really good. Because people who hadn't trained necessarily, and they go into Performance Center or like a promotion, they start to train. When you bring in, and I guess that's what it is too. It's like you you look at Ronda and you don't think like professional wrestling trainee or future professional wrestler. You 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 kind of see celebrity. And you think of all the other celebrities that, you know, get signed and get like three months of wrestling, say like in WCW Power Plant or OBW or NXT, and then come out there and they learn like, say, seven spots and they pretty much train them to not look horrible the point where okay we've got this and then eventually i mean like in ronda's case she's gonna be sticking around so they're gonna be treating training her with more stuff but god damn is she a natural maybe maybe time will tell i I mean the potential is there and here's the thing too you knew you were having this match for months like they booked this match specifically out i have no doubt that they rehearsed this match beginning to end yeah multiple times so yeah, I've got you know. But the thing is to have I was gonna say to have Rhonda out there and in her first match, ideally you want her first match to be against somebody who can work their ass off and make her look good and cover any mistakes that she might necessarily mm-hmm. make. You, you don't. You have Stephanie fucking McMahon out there. Who who had one hell of a match. Yeah. Stephanie looked good. Stephanie worked her ass off out there. Like, I expected this to be mostly Triple H and Angle and then, you know, bringing the women in for little segments and then that was it. But nope. No, they. I mean, and Steph got offense in and Ronda sold and. Yeah. Rhonda got off and sit on trips, which was cool. We knew that was going to happen. Yeah. yeah. When Kurt Angle is the worst part of a match, uh, it's a good thing. And Kurt's just Kurt's just beat up, man, and that's his whole his whole problem. I don't want to take anything away from him. He's a Hall of Famer. Like the the guy's paid his dues, and I will love him until the end of time. He was the worst part of this match. Yeah. He's, and that doesn't, that's not, he wasn't horrible necessarily. It's just. No. He was definitely slow and a little off all the time, but whatever. I don't care. The match was so good, I don't care. But yeah, then Steph, uh, Steph murders, or I'm sorry, Ronda murders Steph in the end. Yeah. Monday night, Steph comes out in an arm brace. Uh, tells the crowd they all owe her a pat on the back for, you know, bringing Ronda Rousey here and getting that performance out of her. Ronda comes out, agrees to shake her hand and be friends with her. Oh, yeah, and then snaps her arm off again. <laughs> Does the happy face, sad face. Yep. Which is perfect, and they didn't have her say a word, and that's all she should ever do. Yeah. Um. All right. Then, oh, my God, we're not even halfway. Oh, no, now we're halfway through this show. Hallelujah. Here we go. This this is the part we can more speed through. Yes, the Bludgeon Brothers uh, take over the SmackDown Tag Team Championships from the Usos and the New Day. That was a squash match. Cool. Less than six minutes. It was going to be quick, and and it was. Yeah, it was. This match was everything it needed to be. I have no complaints about it. Yeah. Uh, the Undertaker defeated John Cena when he showed up after. So Cena comes back out. Uh. Ref comes out, says, see, he's, he's not here. Or, or, we lied earlier. Sorry about that. We fucked up. Dude was just fucking with you. Yeah. Cena gets ready to leave. Cena gets halfway up the ramp. The lights go out. 
The crowd loses its shit, and all you hear is one strum of a guitar, and Elias is here. <laughs> what a perfect, Such. what a perfect, what a, what a what a troll, and what a perfect yeah. use of Elias. Uh, okay. Cena manages to lay him out quickly. Cena goes to leave again. The lights go out. The best part was Cena's music stops as he's going up the ramp, and you see Cena stop and be like, oh shit, my music stopped. Shit's about to go down. <laughs> like, the most meta moment in WrestleMania history of, like, I know what my music stopping means. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go out. Undertaker comes out. Uh, they go for two minutes and 45 seconds, which is exactly as long as this needed to be. Undertaker beat the shit out of Cena and left him laying in the middle of the ring. Perfectly fine. Have no problems with it. Undertaker gets his redemption in New Orleans. Undertaker looked good, looked athletic. He looked really good in this match for two minutes. Which, if you're going to bring him back to do matches, this is exactly what it should be. I wish he was still. I wish he was still dead. Don't get me wrong. I wish when his shit was left in the middle of the ring, that was the end of it. But if this is, if you, you're going to bring him back, and this is what you're going to do with him, perfectly fine. I was fine with him coming back for one match. The fact that they're using him in Saudi Arabia is pissing me off. Yeah, be- because. This is what you're doing. He didn't want to come back. He wanted to stay retired. It was Cena who dragged him back. Yeah, we're so within the Cena's, context of the It's storyline. Cena's fault that he's here. Yeah. But now it just looks like, hey, you know, I'm just waiting for a phone call. Right. Um, Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon defeat Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn by submission. They will not be rehired to SmackDown. That was cool. Daniel Bryan's wrestling again. And he looked like he never missed a beat. It looked like no. that three years never happened. Okay, now. No, he was, he was smooth. Uh, it, I was curious to see the direction they were going in because he got laid out early and Shane did a good portion of the first half of the match. Oh, yeah, we could have taken that five minutes out of the match. For sure. <laughs> That's like, that part could have been minutes shorter of Shane, of Shane just selling pro in the Zane. But I get why they wanted to do that. Like, they, they're trolling everyone. Oh, look, Daniel's fragile. No, he's not. <laughs> yeah. It worked. It's good storytelling. And you could tell that it they were kind of building to that because... He goes down. They're all working on him. You know, the EMTs are down there working on him. And we keep not seeing it. So until you have that, like, two count, basically. He just appears. And poof, there he is. Yep. Of course, a callback to WrestleMania 30 main event. Yeah. So. Very cool. Good to see him. He did wrestle AJ Styles on SmackDown Tuesday night. And we'll get to the the results of that later in the show. Because that ties into later. Yeah. Uh, Nia Jax defeated Alexa Bliss to take the Raw Women's Championship. Cool. Good. Perfect. She deserves it. 100%. Maybe the most improved so far in 2018? As far as, as, far as everything? Like, is the total package improvement? I can't think of anyone else in the last four months that's improved as much as she has. Yeah, and I don't want to think about it right now, but um, I mean, it's fine. It it had to be that payoff. Oh yeah, you couldn't have Alexa win this. It had to be Naya. Naya had to destroy her. Yep, and it was perfect. It worked great. She laid out Mickey early, and then killed Alexa. <laughs> it was perfect. Uh. In Monday night, and, oh, go ahead. and again, she just had the emotion, like when she got the belt, like to see her basically lose it, getting the belt was, yeah, a moment there. Yep, I'm happy for her. She just, she totally deserves it. Uh, then Monday night, um, Alex or Naya comes out to talk to the fans. Alexa and Mickey come out, continue to shame the shit out of her. Uh, and they're like, well, where's your tag team partner? And she goes, oh yeah. 
I've got one, uh, and her name is Ember Moon. So welcome, Ember Moon, to the main roster. Cool. Good to see her there. Yeah, it was only a matter of time, so. Yeah, it was definitely done. Um, AJ Styles retained the WWE Championship against Shinsuke Nakamura in a very good match. It was a good match. It was a very New Japan-style match in a crowd that had already been sitting in this arena for six hours, so it felt way flatter than it actually was. My heart is heavy. If you had this match in the pool, you won. This match I've held a to. <laughs> I mean... And it, it hurt me. This to... is where I kind of mentally lost, like, any hair on the show. But it was at the beginning of Hour 7. Like... Yeah. You can't expect anyone to care at that point. It was not the time to have this match, and it it sucks because it's it's a match that in theory should have been a main event, or you know it was the quote unquote dream match. My thought is, you flip this match and the Intercontinental Triple Threat, the card feels totally different. Yeah, like you flip those it, two matches, it's a totally different feel in the show. Because it would would have woken people that that triple threat would have woken people up, gotten people active again. Yeah. But yeah, it it was a match that you know you're watching five six hours of wrestling. It's no and no matter what, what like, yeah. And I think they wrestled a very New Japan style match. And no matter even if they would have wrestled more of a WWE style match, no matter what happened, this match was doomed to fail. Like, it was going right. to be very quiet in that. Or, and I shouldn't say doomed to fail, because the match did not fail. The match was very, very good, technically. Yeah. But what reaction are you gonna, What reaction are you expecting from that? Again, people have been sitting there for... They, they've been in the arena watching wrestling for six hours. They've probably been in the arena for eight hours. Like, what do you want from them? So I don't fault AJ. I don't fault Shinsuke. The show's just... This is... This is a product of WrestleMania being too damn long. Yeah. But a very good match, top to bottom. I enjoyed the hell out of it. And it did the important thing at the end. Yes, at the very end. Of course, after AJ hits Styles Clash, gets the three count. Uh, Shinsuke gets the belt from the referee, gets down on one knee, presents it to AJ. AJ is holding the belt, is all celebrating, like, all right, we're buddies. And Shinsuke hits him in the nuts with a Lobo. Shinsuke heel turn. Unexpected, incredibly unexpected, but in retrospect, I mean, it was like, completely the right decision. It was like a Street Fighter uppercut, man. No. I thought his arm was going to go straight through his body and yes. split him in half. And then the best part is, Tuesday night, uh... AJ and Daniel Bryan are having their match, and who shows up but Shinsuke Nakamura to hit AJ in the nuts three more times. So my thought is, cool, glad we turned him heel, especially after he told uh, Renee Young, I don't speak English. <laughs> um, maybe we back off the nut punches a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we pull back from that a little bit. That doesn't need to be his thing. Uh, but it's the right decision for him. It's There's plenty of top faces on this roster right now. There is a lack of top heels. So. And it's it's easy to forget because when Shinsuke came over, he came over with this kind of essence around him, this charisma, and people liked him because he was different. And he was the guy in in. NXT, they liked him because he was he was the guy from Japan. He was the guy, you know, he just had that charisma about him. So people are going to like him. It's not necessarily because he was a face or a heel. He was just how he happened to be working. He was, he was a face by default. Yeah. And then again, that carries over to, you know, when he went to SmackDown, he was a face by default. But people forget that I mean, when Chaos first formed, Chaos over in New Japan wasn't exactly, you know, happy-go-lucky or whatever. Right. Toriyanu wasn't always just, you know, complete goofball. He was dick. Yeah. 
Somebody even posted like, oh shit, they saw that. Ask Tanahashi how he feels about that shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's a good character for him, especially with the landscape of the characters that are in WWE right now. And it's it's a role he can play without necessarily. He doesn't have to cut the promos and be a dick like that. His mannerisms are meant to be dickish. They're oh, dickish. Yeah. He were they were dickish as a face. Yeah. So it, his style realistically works better as a heel from a nonverbal standpoint. His style in the ring works better as a heel, especially in America. So I think that people that weren't necessarily wowed by Nakamura on the main roster are going to see a better Nakamura going forward. Yep. For sure. Um, in the WrestleMania moment of the evening, because God damn it, we make moments. Uh, Braun Strowman comes out. Uh, okay, so, so we gotta go through this whole entrance because this was amazing. So Cesaro and Sheamus make their entrance on a Mardi Gras parade float on the stage. Very cool. I was yep. like, all right, finally, yeah, we're embracing him in the New Orleans. On by the way, we didn't even talk about this. Um, the most beautiful stage I think I've ever seen them create. Yeah. Just, it was very Vegas-like. It fit the spectacle. It fit where they were. It fit everything about WrestleMania. So kudos to whoever designed that. The thing was gorgeous. Um, so the bar comes out, does their entrance. Uh, bronze music hits. Uh, the the parade float still parked at the top of the entrance ramp. And so Bronze just goes, fuck this. I'm going to walk on this thing. Gets on top of the float where all of the... Uh, the carnival characters still are with their giant masks and everything. Puts his arms up in the air and yells, Broad! And they all scatter. <laughs> just to watch these giant headed creatures, like, just running in terror with their arms flailing yes. as they're running. Which it's was just... absolutely the laugh I needed at 1125 at night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he comes out, grabs the mic, says, So who's going to be my partner? And basically announces it's a member of the WWE Universe. Goes out into the crowd to try to find his partner. Hilariously enough, you know, where Tanahashi and Ibushi and all these guys are. <laughs> but he doesn't pick any of those guys. No, no, no. He picks Nicholas, a fourth grader. They come in. Nicholas gets one hot tag. But Braun basically destroys the bar in four minutes. And uh, Braun and Nicholas win the Raw Tag Team Champions and Chips. Um, That's... Gimmicky and kind of stupid, but funny. I mean, it was a WrestleMania moment. I'm good with it. Yeah. Whatever. It was sports entertainment. I was sports yeah. entertained in this moment. It would have been fine. It took so long oh, yeah, we to cut, find him. We could have cut about three minutes off of that part. But, uh, I mean, it was cool to see the kid, <laughs> the kid just looking completely terrified. <laughs> like, being really excited and then getting up on the apron and being like, oh, shit, I fucked up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He he played that well. The kid, by the way, John John Cone's son. Yeah, referee John Cone. So that's cool. Uh, so then the so he he knew what he was doing going in there. Yes. Uh, the but next. I, oh, I was just gonna say that one spot where you see him and Braun like looks over to make the tag, and the kid just decides, yeah. Yeah, screw it. I'm going to stick in. my hand out. I'm going to just look for the tag. He gets in the ring just long enough to give uh, Braun a blow and then tags him back in when Braun's like, oh, that's probably a poor decision. <laughs> Braun tags him back in. He just, like, stares, I think it's Cesaro for a second, and he's just like, nope. Yep. Then... Very good. Yeah. They win. Um, If you have a complaint about this being stupid to the business, but at the same time, you watched anything at Joey Janela's spring break and went, oh, that was good. Fuck you. You're you're just saying that because you, you're trying to hate on WWE. Uh, this is just sports entertainment, right? WWE is totally different. This is not uh, the NWA in the 80s. So in, just enjoy the stupid moment that happened because it was fun. Right? And am I it's, wrong for thinking that? No. Like as much as I love really good, like, technical wrestling like i enjoyed the hell out of this moment it was really funny and it was cute and it was heartwarming like 
especially from a character like Braun who's transformed from this just like, oh yeah, I'm gonna throw Roman off the fucking loading dock to like now I'm gonna pick this kid from the audience. I mean, because you were sitting there and you were going, Well, you know, I don't want this kid being there. But at the same time, you would have been perfectly fine had it been James Ellsworth. Oh yeah. Yeah. Who essentially is the same exact thing. Right. So that's how it was cool. Uh, the next Monday night on Raw, uh, Braun and Nicholas relinquish the Raw tag team titles due to Nicholas's scheduling conflicts of fourth grade, <laughs> um, which triggers the tag team eliminator. Because apparently Vince now hates the word tournaments is the rumor. That, that is that's, now a banned word. That's what I was trying to figure out. When they said eliminator at first, I assumed it was like... so. I know we were going to shit on this earlier, but so Meltzer reported, well, it's, uh, well, well, Brian, it's because, that's because uh, Vince hates the word tournaments now. Say the fucking words. So, anyway, it's probably him just saying shit, but, you know, apparently we don't like tournaments now. So it's the tag team eliminator. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I, I got confused with it because I thought it was going to be like when they do. Um, like a tornado. Or a gauntlet. Gauntlet, yeah. That's what I thought they meant yeah. by the Eliminator was, okay, the Revival wins the first match. <clears throat> means the Revival stays in and takes on the next person. So we have like four or five teams, and the last team is crowned champions. But, but nope. Okay. Yeah. So we're determining the number one tag contender to face, or to face uh, the bar at was it that Backlash or Greatest Royal Rumble? I can't remember. There's too many events going up. For the, yeah. whatever, one of those two for the Raw Tag Team titles. So the winner of the Eliminator faces the bar for the titles. Then to the main event of the evening, uh, and probably the most shocking moment of the evening, in all honesty, yeah. uh, Brock Lesnar defeated Roman Reigns in 15 minutes and 55 seconds to retain the Universal Championship amidst all the rumors of him departing the company. Uh, it was announced the next day he resigned. Uh, man, you think about the last year building everything up to all of these F5s being not kicked out of. And that's the whole story of this match in theory, right? Is that Roman keeps getting hit with F5 after F5 and continues to kick out. Uh, and then he just doesn't, because fuck that. So what... We'll can you tell me honestly what the entire point of the last year title reign of Brock Lesnar was if Roman Reigns doesn't win last Sunday? I can't. And here's the, here's the thing that got me. I mean, because I actually got mad. I was <clears throat> and, furious when it happened. And I don't, I don't care at this point, like for either one of them. But I, I would love the belt off of Brock, but you no, know, whatever. Was that? You know, Roman Reigns comes out and gets booed because, by law, that's what you're supposed to do. Yep. And he's fighting this attack, and everyone's shitting on the match. Just in general, the yep. match is getting shit on. Right. And they get to this point, and he kicks out of another F5, and it is whatever. So Brock, being the responsible person he is proceeds to take his razor-sharp elbows to Roman's head and bust the living shit out of him open. And, of course, the rumor mill, and take this, you know, for what it's worth, uh, that was not planned. Brock just decided to get some color on Roman. So on his own. He goes, he goes and does this. Whether intentional or planned or whatever and Roman goes all Shawn Michaels in you know bad blood hell in a cell and face gets completely covered in blood which is why I was like and, he's totally going to win right now <laughs> and kicks out of I think another F5 or whatever it was mm -hmm. and the crowd starts to cheer him yeah, it was, like it was working. This this turned the crowd. The blood literally turned the crowd. 
Right, which is why when I saw the blood, I was like, oh, shit, they figured it out. That's how they're, that's, this is their ploy to get the crowd to cheer him. And I'm like, they finally made him a, yeah, they, they got a baby face reaction because the crowd right. who is like looking at this going, oh, shit, like he hard weighed him. They're actually getting behind him. And then the moment they get behind him, one, two, three wins. And the crowd like, was stunned. Like it took so long for you to get what you wanted and you actually got it. And it's like, oh, fuck it. Well, they've been getting him cheered for the last couple of weeks when he's been running his mouth about Brock being a part timer because, in, I mean, that's a work shoot. It is 100% the truth. Yeah. Like, I am sick of fucking seeing Brock Lesnar holding that goddamn belt. Because, well, when we see him holding the belt, which is like once every three months. Anyway, fuck that. He's challenging him at. <laughs> then I like how they're like. He th- uh, Monday night, it's announced uh, Brock will be facing Roman again at the Greatest Royal Rumble in a cage for the title. And now apparently it's some conspiracy <laughs> that they're just like, now we're now Roman's being tortured somehow, being consistently put in the ring with Brock. I didn't agree to this. Guess I'm doing that. I found out on the internet. Yep. Then Joe shows up and says, well, I don't give a shit. I'm going to face you at Backlash, so fuck you, Roman. <laughs> Where Such Samoa Joe, Samoa Joe faces Samoan Joe. Ooh, I like that. See, I said that on Monday, and no one got it. I like it. Because that's because his, his name is Joe uh, Joe Anna White. Yeah, that's yeah. his actual name, and you. he's actually Samoan. I got you. That's why you and I do the podcast together, Tom. Yeah, I guess. Um, so that was WrestleMania. It was long, just like this podcast. Yes. Um. Okay, um, other people that debuted on Raw. Uh, no Way Jose is here. Cool. So there's your opening match on every house show that is Raw. Yeah. Which is cool. That's a great spot for him. It's perfect. Don't get me wrong. Like, he's the perfect opening match wrestler. It's a good spot for him. Um, He'll be good on Velocity or whatever the hell those shows are. <laughs> Main event? Was it jacked and amped or something? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be awesome on Sunday night. Metal. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Bobby Lashley showed back up. I don't even remember who he killed. I just remember Bobby Lashley came in and killed somebody. I was like, fuck yeah, Bobby Lashley. Was it Slater? Elias. Was it Elias? Oh, Elias. yeah. It was AOP who also debuted that came out and killed uh, Slater and Rhino. Right. So, now are they all going to stay on Raw? Who the fuck knows? The SmackDown or the, the Superstar Shakeup is next week, Monday and Tuesday. Better known as Fuck Over Tom SmackDown tickets for May. Yes, yeah, I'm. This is why I still haven't bought my tickets. And if they move Charlotte, I'm not buying front row tickets, Tom. Well, literally, I'm my not deciding front row factor. Anyways, so. This is my deciding factor on where I buy tickets from. Club level, baby. No, I'm not buying club level. I ain't that fancy. I need to go – I told – we had this discussion. I need to sit in the front row, Tom. I need to not shower for three weeks before I sit in the front row. I need to get myself over, Tom. All right? I need to – I need to, to just boot – I just need to yell shit about Roman Reigns during a fucking uh, 205 Live match because that's what matters. Uh, what other things did we say I need to do? I, I need to physically harass the women's talent. Yes. Uh, every time there's a two count, I need to yell sweet. Uh, what else? What else am I missing? Oh, I need to go in cosplay, obviously, if I'm sitting in the front row. Duh. Which uh, Hot Topic shirt will you be wearing? Oh, Young Bucks. Duh. Okay. And it's going to be the cease and desist shirt, too, because, you know. You're going to stick it to Vince. Vince is going to see me in the front row and be like, God damn it. I was wrong. That kid's right. Uh, Yeah. So anyway, that was WrestleMania week. And then there was the Andre doc, which I've watched and you haven't. So we'll talk about that next week. No, I, I don't pay for HBO. Sorry. I didn't either. I got a free HBO now one month trial to watch it. So uh, if you haven't watched it uh, in the next week, 
uh, do the one month free trial of HBO now and watch it because uh, we'll discuss it then. I hadn't thought about that. I should do that. Yeah, it's good. That's that was the right call. Um, and we'll discuss it next week. It was very very good. I highly highly recommend watching it. Um, it was it was really good. Any of the Yankees won tonight. The Orioles did too. I don't know how that happened. Apparently they realized you know that offense is an important part of baseball for the first time this year. Well, Boston Boston beat the Yankees last night like 14-1, so every Boston fan oh, was insufferable. claiming the championship of they're, April. They're all right. Calm the fuck down. Yeah. It's baseball. There's, what, 170 games left. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> um, any parting thoughts on WrestleMania weekend, Tom? Jesus. Um, We've been doing this for almost two hours. Stop with the damn commercials in the middle of the goddamn pre-show during the matches. You've got plenty of time around those matches for the fucking Okay, but you know why they do that? Because it's the same feed that you're going to see on YouTube and Periscope and everything, so they're trying to sell the pay-per-view that way. I understand That's they're trying to sell the pay-per-view. Yep. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. I want to watch... Especially when it's like they're trying to make a point over, like, in the Women's Royal Rumble, like or the women's battle royal how like when Naomi showed up and we didn't realize she was eliminated well i didn't know half the people were fucking eliminated because you had commercial breaks oh yeah but did you watch it on usa because they didn't take commercial breaks on the network and it was painfully no, obvious they... it was painfully obvious when, i watched it on the, the network n- it was painfully obvious when the network was throwing to a usa commercial break <laughs> but oh well that's okay no, it was on the network where I got to see, like, repeated it's promos a... for Roman or whatever. Oh, yeah. Um, well, we survived, Tom. Another WrestleMania in the books. Yeah. Jesus Christ. We don't We're have... not doing pin mail tonight. Um, no. We got it's, it... three of them. All right. No, we can do it in, like, two seconds. Hold on. Let me pull one up here. Okay. okay. Pin... All right. Pin mail time. Pin mail. Okay. What are your th- uh, from Noah's Ark? What are your thoughts late, on the Nakamura man. heel turn? I think it's the right move for the character. Should be interesting to see how it plays out. Uh, we agreed with that three minutes ago. Uh, here we go. Yeah. Next question from Taylor Griggs ninety three. Uh, do you think the Nakamura AJ match was falling flat was a result of them being told not to steal the show? No, that wasn't the reason. The crowd was tired. We covered that about three minutes ago. Next question and final question from <laughs> at tweets from Seth. Uh, with SmackDown it's Live and 205 Live coming to Raleigh in May, who do you hope ends up on the blue brand after next week? Uh, the answer is Charlotte. All right, that was fun. This has been another edition of Pin Mail. I'm also here, but sure. Oh, go ahead. Who else? Who do you want to see? Who do you want to see at SmackDown? No, that's fine. I'm, I'm, well, I'm the other, fine the with the first, the way it is. The first two we already covered. So Yeah. Um, um, leave AJ where he who? is, which they probably will because of the title. Cool. Right. Uh, Nakamura will probably stay because they're going to be locked in a feud. Cool. Yeah. Um, Charlotte may move. Um, let's see. I'm good with seeing the Iconics. Totally 100% down with that. Cool. Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of down to see anybody. Move Finn. Fuck it. I don't give a shit. Let me see Finn. Just because I need to see those abs. Yo. Tom. 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 Buddy. Are we going to swap the uh, U.S. and uh, Intercontinental again? Get um, some quality gender action over in Raw? And... Oh, God, please. If, if they could do that, just so I don't see gender. Just so I don't have to steer at those awful guy, that gyno chest of his, please. And then that means we'd get uh, Seth over and yes. smack that, which. I'm down with this. We burned it down in Raleigh, baby. Yeah, I'm, I'm just looking forward to seeing that because not only the uh, the shifting of the handful of people that will shift, but th- there's still the opportunity for call-ups. Drew McIntyre is going to end up showing up somewhere, I think, because well, he's supposedly healthy. I don't think so because, uh, I mean, and this could be a complete red herring, but the way, you know, the way he was talking on the uh, – 
Well, you know what? Was he at tapings tonight? Let's see if he was at NXT tapings. How about that? There's your real question. But I mean, there's like big cast who's possibility of coming uh, back. Don't give a shit. <laughs> gonna be 100% honest I with you. I want to know what they're gonna do with him. Just because they've got nothing to do with him. He's so. Nothing. And that's exactly where he should be. Uh, so, um, what's his face that we were just talking about? Scottish guy, uh, McIntyre. Drew! Drew was not, uh, Drew was not on the NXT tapings tonight. So, either he's not healthy or he will be called up as a shakeup next week. But on the pre-show, he did talk about, uh, you know, whoever won the NXT championship, you know, if that's Alistair, he's coming for Alistair, or he's, no matter what, he was going for, uh, Almas next. So, so no. almost maybe a call up. I mean, I, almost I could almost be a call up. Smackdown. Yeah, I mean, that'd be a good. That's a good little spot for him. So it doesn't look like. Oh Jesus! Now I'm reading spoilers. I'm really just bad. Almost was on one of the earlier tapings in Selena Vega's corner. But that's it. So, who knows? Still open to a couple call ups. I don't know. It's yeah. you know it's live. It's live WWE TV. I'm down to see whoever. In all honesty. Yeah. All right. It'll be Tom. nice to see an actual ta- taping because we've had house shows for the last couple of years. I think the last SmackDown actual taping in Raleigh was, I think, four years ago. I think the last live TV that was done in North Carolina was a Raw in Greensboro about three or four years ago. I was at so. It has been a while. It is time. Yeah. I am excited. All right. So let's get the fuck out of here. Yes. <laughs> Tom, tell the people where they can find you on the internet. Go on to Twitter machine at Mr. Workrate at MR Workrate. Um, yeah, that's it. Yep. I'm uh, tired. Yep. I'm on everywhere at JC Bob at JCB. The show's on Twitter at cheaters in the R pin, Facebook rate, review, subscribe, all that shit. Thank you so much for all of your loyal listening today through the nearly two-hour edition of Cheaters Never Pin. Holy shit. That it was going to be long. We warned you. Yeah. So we hope uh, we hope by now you've made it back home safely after a wonderful day at work. <laughs> uh, we appreciate you listening to the show. Next week we'll break down the shakeup after it happens. Maybe dive into what we'd like to see come out of the shakeup. We'll see how pissed off we are about our SmackDown tickets. Yes, that's also a possibility. And who knows? Uh, maybe we'll do the show in person next week. Maybe. Ooh. Ooh. Teaser. Um, so thanks for listening, as always. Keep supporting wrestling. That's all I gotta say. So I'm JC. Yeah. I'm Tom. And we'll catch you on the flip side. <laughs>